Hi. Richard and I are here to talk about basic finance, really from an entrepreneur's perspective or from a business modeling perspective. So he'll, carry, he'll really carry most of this ball, but I have four points, no more, no less, to go over. They're really like assumptions or like philosophy on, on your financials. The first one is the spreadsheet is not the business. It's really the barometer. And I think most of you get that immediately. You have your numbers there, put together, a, put together a financial model. Believe it or not, for most of you, this is actually the easy part. It, it's very tangible, it's concrete. It's, it's the other parts of the plan that are more difficult. You know, you think about how do I create the team? How, uh, who is my customer? How do I reach them? Those are all, those are all much more difficult because they're less, they're less tangible. Uh, the other thing, another way to look at that is that your spreadsheet or your financials are really like the dependent variable and the rest are the independent variables. The spreadsheet gets set in place for everything else you do. It's kind of like, a, it's kind of like keeping a score. Uh, second, know the important financial metrics in your business or what drives the, uh, your financial model. So for some of you, let's say if you were doing, like I do, a online, an online periodical, right? Number of subscribers. Uh, it could be your churn rate if you're doing something in uh, uh, doing a retail business. It could be uh, number of raw number of customers visited that month, and get an intuitive feel for at least a ballpark feel for how those metrics drive your business. Well, how would you know? Well, you get a feel for where is the break-even point. You know how many customers do I need to get into a rough ballpark of break-even or pro and then how fast does your margins increase once you get past break-even. Uh, you know, especially for your early assignments, don't uh, don't worry about getting into mind-numbing detail because, frankly, yeah, chances are better than 50-50 you're going to have to change major elements of your plan. But you start mo modeling it out and getting a place, uh, putting all the numbers into place, you'll have a better feel for how it impacts the entire plan. Uh, next one, number three, profit does not equal cash flow. And for those of you coming from outside of ever looking at a spreadsheet or looking at financials, it's an interesting feature because under profit you include the money you're about to get or that you've built out for. Problem with that is that the money isn't in hand. Uh, you know what they say is that for a startup it's all about cash flow because when you run out of cash you run out of money. So there's cash flow which is, includes your accounts receivable, right? That's the money that you've been promised, but hasn't come. And if you, if any of you grew up with a business, or have been near people who've run a business, you know some of those, uh, some of those promises don't come through. People break their promises, <coughs> and so that's the meaning. Cash flow is the cash flow in the hand. Uh, the other thing is what I like, and I think most investors like, and frankly, if it's your family, they probably think the same thing. How much money are you going to need, right? So how much money do you need and when do you need it? So you may need so much money to start up. And then later on, when you do a little expansion, you say, you know what? I've got it going. Now I've got to buy some equipment. This is how much money I'm going to need at this point in time. And then so forth. So you think about how much money you need. It's not just the raw, um, raw amount of money uh, at that point in time. But if you do a cash flow analysis, how much money you think will be coming in, that will help you uh, give you the cushion you need. For example, if you, some of you have a business that tries to use the federal government as its customer, right? it could be a three month or six month cycle before you receive the check. So you got to buy your equipment plus about six months worth of, uh, of expenses and payments out to, your, out to your employees. So that's it. Those are the four points. The spreadsheet is not the business. Number two, know the important levers or metrics for your business. Three, Profit doesn't equal cash flow. And four, how much money do you need and when? Okay, so we have made a financial forecast for you in Excel for you to use. Uh, it's a three-year spreadsheet. So you can see here, here's the first year going across. There's year one. Keep going across. There's year two. Keep going across. There's year three. And up here are all assumptions, right? This whole area up here are assumptions. All the pink areas are areas that you can fill in. Then down below, beginning on row line 42, you see an income statement where you have the revenue, which is amounts you'll get from customers, cost of goods sold, which are the direct costs associated with that, 
operating expenses like your sales expenses and marketing expenses, devs, ops, admin. Getting you down to operating income, subtract off income taxes, gets you to net income. Okay. The next section, beginning on row 61, is your cash flow. And here, it starts with your opening cash balance, and then you add your net income, and you add your depreciation, because that's an expense, but it's not a cash expense. Plus or minus working capital, we'll talk about that. Less any capital purchases, like uh, big assets you have to buy, or a building, or computers, or photocopier. Any loans in and loans out, right? That's rows 71 and 73, 72 and 73. And then cash from investors. All that adds up to your change in cash, and then your ending cash balance is simply your opening cash balance less the change in cash. Okay, and then the third financial statement is your balance sheet. And that will have cash and receivables, so amounts due you from customers, as Alan said. There might be times when your customers aren't paying you cash, right? You give them terms. That has a subtotal, long-term assets, that's your fixed assets like computers and copiers and cars and whatever, at its net depreciated value. Add that up, gives you total assets. Subtract off any liabilities to your vendors, any long-term debt, that equals equity. And this number, total liabilities and equity, has to equal total assets. Okay, so let's go up, because this is all based upon assumptions. So, the revenue assumptions are you're selling a thing, and it's really just price times quantity. You're selling something, and let's say you're selling, you know, 2,000 widgets. This could be page views, this could be subscriptions, this could be a consumer product, this, you know, whatever it is that you're selling. And let's say that grows at 10% per month times, I'm just going to say times 1.1. And, oops, equal this, times 1.1. And I'm going to carry that across. And let's say you're selling it for $10. $10 is so what you're selling it for. You, the price might go up. It might go down, right? You could change this to $30 or something, right? But let's just say it stays the same the first year. Your direct costs associated with that. Let's say you're selling page views, uh, but your costs are in ad... Uh, uh, so let's say you're selling page views... Um, but your costs are based on a slightly different metric. You could have this different or the same. But let's say we're selling some sort of widget, and so it's going to be equal to the same. So I'm just going to make that row equal to the row above it. And the cost is $3, right? So we're selling it for $10, we're buying it for 3 and we've got $500 of fixed costs. I don't know, the website or uh, an agreement fee with Amazon for distribution or something where we it's an even 500 bucks, right? This $3 varies with how many we sell, therefore it's a variable expense. This $500 is fixed. If we sell zero, I still got to pay $500, so that's why it's called a fixed cost. Then you see we have uh, departments, right? You have your sales department, marketing department, development, operations, and administrative. So thinking through this, right, you have to go back to your business model, right? How is it that I'm selling this? Do I have a direct sales? force or not, right? So let's say you don't have a direct sales force, but you are paying a 10% commission to um, to channel members. Uh, you do have a marketing person, and you go up to two marketing people in June, um, and you're going to pay them 2000 a month. It's just assumptions. And uh, the marketing department budget, they get a budget of $1,000 a month. Okay, Or you could vary it, right? You could make it go up or down. That's what any of these cells, you don't have to be the same. I'm just making it the same for ease of use. So let's see. Let's go down below to our income statement and see what it is that I've done. Well, there's our 2,000 units times $10 a unit. There's our 2,000 units times 3,000 uh, three dollars, right? So that's six thousand dollars plus the five hundred dollars of fixed costs means I've got gross margin of thirteen five. I'm paying a ten percent commission, so twenty thousand times ten percent, and I've got one marketing person at two thousand dollars plus a thousand dollar budget, right? For expenses, I mean, they're going to make pamphlets or something. Well, those marketing people are employees, so I probably need to put in some taxes for them. You notice how that jumped from. 3000 to 3200 
So let's say I've got 10% in employment taxes and uh, I'll get them benefits at month six. Um, so you notice how the amounts change as I put things in there. Income taxes are income taxes for the business and let's just say that's going to be 25%. So you can see if I stop right here, I've got 13.5 of gross margin. I've got 8,100 of operating income, right? Because I only have $5,400 of expenses. And so I'm making money, right? Well, let's go back up here and say, you know what? Actually, I've got, uh, I've got insurance and some leases and stuff. That's costing me a thousand. I've got an administrative person at a thousand dollars a month. I need to pay for them. Uh, I've got, uh, I need to have a customer service person that I'll hire out here, um, and they get a budget, um, uh, in devs. So let's say, well, I need two devs at $3,000 a piece, and I need one QA at $1,000 a piece, and they need to have a $100 a month budget, right? I'm going to carry that across. So once I filled in more expenses, look, I'm losing money the first three months. I'm down here in the income statement, line 42, and I'm starting to lose money. But as my income grows, you see I start to make money. And then when I get, when it starts getting taxable, right, when the cumulative amount is over zero, then I start having income taxes. Cash flow. So here's my cash flow, and if I didn't have to buy any equipment, my income would equal my cash flow. And I'm assuming that my customers are paying me in cash. Well, those aren't great assumptions, so let's go back up. Let's go all the way back up here and say capital purchases, line 36. Well, I'm going to need $50,000 of equipment and test equipment. I need $1,000 of, well, let's see, I hired I got two devs. I hired a second person. So I need a couple of uh, computers for those new hires. And let's say I need $5,000 worth more of test equipment or renewal on a subscription of some sort or something. So you see now, those capital purchases came down here. So not only did I lose the money from operations, but I also have cash outflows for investing, right, for, for those purchases of those assets. So I better raise money. And this uh, number up here, line 62, is blank in case you start the business with some cash, but... Let's just say you're starting from scratch and you need to raise money, right? So I want to raise probably $60,000. And you see that I've got some money here and it drops a little, but then it starts going up and going up and going up, okay? But again, this assumes that my customers have paid me cash. Well, let's say I give them terms and they have to pay me in 30 days, which means my current month's revenues, I'm going to make this equal to my current month's revenues, let's go back up to the income statement, my current month's revenues, they don't pay this month, they pay it next month, right? So, by putting $20,000 in here, it says, oh, well, in your income was an assumption of revenues from customers, but that's a bad assumption, I'm going to defer that until next month, right? So it comes out here and goes in here. But this month, Yes, you're collecting the money from cat from month one, but this month you're deferring the money from month two, right? So each month, let's just copy this across, each month now I have a 30-day assumption in my receivables. So wow, I've got negative cash, I'm gonna have to raise more money. Okay? More than 75, let's raise a hundred thousand. Right? So this can help you know how much money you need to raise. So let's say in year two, you've got another big outflow of money, then you know exactly when to raise the second round. So you can do this, fill in these shaded areas, and you can fill it in for year one, I'm back at the top, uh, year one, and going to the right, you can fill in year two and year three. I'm back now at the beginning. And again, it'll show you your income statement, right? Your income statement. Your cash flow, let's go down and see the cash flow one more time. And your balance sheet. If you have questions, uh, please come and see us during office hours. And I'm hoping this works out for you. If they, you find any bugs in it, please let me know and I can reissue. Uh, 
Thank you very much. Well, now that you've seen kind of a brief overview on setting up your financial model, there is one thing. You do do the model, and that's part of your plan. It's part of good planning. But before you start your start an actual business, you should hire an accountant to help set up your book, initial books. If you have any complexity in your business, it's the wise thing to do. And if you don't have complexity, you probably should do it unless you're already an uh, accounting or financial professional.